quite often in this age of information that we live in, uh, there's so much data that we cannot really comprehend the raw scores, the raw values that we receive, and quite often you end up getting information in summary or grouped form, and you're dealing with group data rather than the original data. Let's just pretend for the sake of uh, illustration here that we've got 15 test scores. It's a sample from a larger set of test scores. The scores range from 0 to 36, and we took a random sample of some larger population of those test scores, and those are the numbers we came up with. There are 15 of them. Now, 15 is not actually that large of a number, but we can think it might be 150 or 1,500 for that matter. And one of the things that happens a lot when the size of the uh, data set gets large is that we rely instead of the raw, on the raw data on the uh, on summarized or group data. For instance, here I've taken uh, intervals, equally spaced intervals, 12 to 17, 18 to 23, 24 to 29, 30 to 35, and I've counted how many values fall in those ranges. If you count those, you will find out that three numbers out of this list fall in the range between 12 and 17, 6 between 18 and 23, 4 between 24 and 29, and 2 between 30 and 35. And that's a summary of the information uh, in the actual data set itself. By the way, that table with uh, the frequencies is called a frequency distribution. Lots of times this information will be presented graphically. For instance here, if instead of using a table, you just take the intervals and put on the horizontal axis and then make a bar at the height, in this case of three, which represents the frequency, and six for this one, four for that one, and two for that one, you get something called a frequency histogram. And it's just a graphical way of um, writing the frequency distribution. They tell you exactly the same thing. While on the subject of graphical ways of representing a frequency distribution, I might also say that you might even, uh, instead of putting a uh, vertical bar of height 3, you might just put a dot at the center. And instead of doing the vertical bar of height 6, you could just put a dot at the center of that interval and so on. And if you connect those dots with line segments, you get a graph called a frequency polygon. Again, it tells you exactly the same thing as a frequency distribution, which tells you exactly the same thing as a frequency, um, the uh, histogram, the frequency histogram. I lost my train of my thought there for a second. All three of those things tell you exactly the same thing. Two of them are graphical. One is a table form, but it's all the same information. Sort of gotten off the subject of what I was uh, getting at, but the graphical interpretation of these table values is also very important. But now getting back to the main point, the main point was I want to look at this summary form of the original data. In fact, Let's pretend that we don't even have this information, that the raw data is not even there, and that we're simply relying on the summary information from a frequency distribution. Quite frequently, that really is the case. So let's completely just wipe out the original data set and concentrate just on the uh, x intervals and the frequencies of occurrence within those intervals. In other words, let's just look as if frequency distribution was all that we ever had. Let's start off by taking that information and calculating a mean. In other words, if I were looking at that um, summary information, that frequency distribution, what would the mean of this sample be? Well, the thing you've got to remember, when you summarize data, you lose information. I've lost the exact values that were between 12 and 17. All I know is that there were three of them. I've lost the exact values between 18 and 23. I just know that there were six of them. So if you're going to calculate a mean and you don't know what the exact values are, the best you can do is just assume that each of them is just the midpoint of the interval. So what you do is you take the midpoint of each interval and pretend that all the values are that value. And as I said, you've lost information and that's just the best you can do. So if you add up 12 and 17 divided by 2, you get the midpoint. It turns out to be 14.5. And you're assuming that 
all three of the numbers in there are 14.5. So you just have 14.5 and another 14.5 and another 14.5. And you do that for each of these intervals. If you take 18 and 23, add them together, divide by 2, you get 20.5. So you assume you have 6 20.5s. And you continue that process for 26.5s and 232.5s. Now you have to take into account that there's not just one of these, there are three of these. There's not just one of these, there's six of these, and so on down the line. So take each frequency and multiply it by the midpoint of the interval that you just found. In other words, 3 times 14.5, 6 times 20.5, all the way down the line. So you get those values. And remember, when you're finding a mean, you sum all the x values. So this represents the sum of all the x values. They're actually multiplied, the midpoints are multiplied by the frequencies because you ha you're assuming you have more than one value that's the same. But in essence, the sum of this column is the sum of the x values, or at least the best approximation to the sum that you can get given that you've lost the original data set. In calculating a mean, after you get the sum of the x, the last thing you do is divide by n. Now remember, n is the number in the original data set, which was 15, and it's really the sum of the frequency column from this table gives you how many original data points you have. So you take the sum of the product of the frequencies in the x midpoints and divide by n, which is also the sum of the frequencies. By the way, um, that gives us the formula for a group mean. You're taking this value, which is this formula, divided by this value, which is n. So the formula for, for calculating a group mean is simply the sum of the product of all the x's with the midpoints of the x intervals all divided by n. So we have 337.5, which is the numerator, divided by 15, and that comes out to be about 22.5. So the group mean is about 22.5. Now keep in mind, we lost some information when we got rid of the original data points and went to this summary thing. So if you took, if you went back and took those 15 numbers, you most likely would not get exactly 22.5. But this is, should be close, and it's definitely the best we can do without going back to the original data set, just looking at the information in this summary form. You can probably guess now that we're going to, to continue this problem and calculate the standard deviation for the group data set. Remember, we've already found out that x bar is 22.5, so I just want to leave that there so we can look at it. And we've already calculated uh, x bar using the table value so far, so we're just going to pick up from there. Assuming that you've already done the work for calculating the group mean, the next thing you'll need to do in calculating a group standard deviation is to calculate the squares of each midpoint. If you go back and look at our formula for uh, um, the sample variance or sample standard deviation, you'll notice that you're going to have a sum of squares in it. So what you do is you go back and you make a column that's going to take the squares of all the midpoints. And I'm going to go straight to what's really a shortcut formula, the shortcut version of the formula for group data. Anyway, like I said, you're going to square each of the x midpoint values and make a column for that. And then you've got to remember that uh, each one of these things represents more than one value, so you have to multiply this by its frequency. So you take the f column values and multiply by the corresponding square values. So it's this number times this number goes here. 6 times 420.25 goes there and so on. So you end up with these four numbers. Now you're going to sum them up. So you're going to get the sums of the squares of the frequencies uh, multiplied, sums of the squares of the x midpoint values multiplied by the frequencies. Sum them all up, that turns out to be 8073.75. And as I said, that number represents the sum of the frequencies multiplied by the squares of the midpoint values all added up. If you go back and compare this to your shortcut formula for the um, sample variance when the information is not grouped, you'll see how similar it is. But basically, the numerator of this quantity is what we just calculated here with this 8073.75. N is a value that we know. X bar is a value that we know. And so now the process is simple.
plugging those values that I just mentioned in and doing the arithmetic, you get the S squared, the sample group standard deviation, uh, the sample standard, excuse me, the, the group sample variance, I'll get it right in a minute, is about 34.29. Also keep in mind that we're looking for the standard deviation, not the variance, so we need to take a square root of that. And so we get that the, the uh, sample standard deviation for this group data is about 5.86. Again, if you went back to the actual 15 data points we started with and calculated the sample standard deviation, you would not expect it to be exactly 5.86, but you would expect, to expect it to be close.